Today, rock and roll is one of the most popular genres of music, and since its origins in the 1950s, the popularity of rock music has allowed its influence to extend beyond the world of art and entertainment. The prevalence in the 1960s of rock artists who use their music to comment upon political issues and current events has led, since that time, to rock music affecting as well as being affected by the evolution of the culture at large. Rock and roll generally is said to have begun as a distinct genre in the early to mid-1950s. It evolved from many earlier forms of music such as jazz, gospel, country, and folk. But its deepest roots and greatest influence can be traced to a distinctly African-American genre called the blues. In fact, the guitar-based instrumentation, the iconic three-chord song structure, and the prototypical rock band consisting of a singer, one or two guitarists, a bass player, a drummer, and a keyboard player can be traced directly to the blues. Blues originated in the African-American communities of the northern Mississippi Delta after the Civil War and was originally just a call and response style of music between a singer and his guitar. It was popularized as a commercial art form in the early 1900s by African-American composer W.C. Handy and became a popular craze in the 1920s and 1930s. After that, the Commercial Recording Center for Blues Music moved to Chicago to a recording company called Chess Records. Chess Records artists such as Muddy Waters, Willie Dixon, and John Lee Hooker began playing what was basically Mississippi Delta Blues, backed by drums, bass, and piano, and making hit records primarily for a black audience in the late 1940s and early 1950s. I went to my baby's house. Around this same time, B.B. King began developing the idea of a lead guitar, where a band's featured guitar player injected guitar parts called runs, fills, and solos in the song. This style of playing has since become a standard of rock and roll music. The late 1940s and 1950s were a good time for America. World War II had ended, the soldiers were home, and the post-war manufacturing and construction-based economy had blossomed. As a result, and unlike in years past, people were able to spend more time enjoying themselves and less time working. Young people were allowed more freedom in their lives and became more rebellious towards their parents. Teenagers began listening to the black music of the era that was adventurous and exciting to listen to as compared to the light, feel-good, white music of the time. This led to artists such as Chuck Berry, an African-American guitarist and vocalist who is known as one of the pioneers of rock and roll, gaining prominence and fame within the music industry. White artists like Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis, working out of the Sun Records studio in Memphis, Tennessee, began to produce their own music based on the style of the innovative black musicians of the period and were making hits. Around this same time, rock and roll was born. Well, rock and roll was born in the 1950s and popularized among teens of that decade in the 1960s when the 7 million plus children of the post-World War II baby boom became teenagers and young adults, rock began to evolve. These young people had been raised in a political environment which centered on the fear of communism and the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And they, led by politically charged rock musicians of that time, wanted change. America's deepening involvement in the Vietnam War and the fight for equal civil rights for African Americans were two highly controversial issues around which much of the focus centered and which spawned rock music with a political undertone. Many songs were released speaking out against the Vietnam War, a few of the most prominent examples being Buffalo Springfield's For What It's Worth, Country Joe McDonald's I Feel Like I'm Fixing the Die Rag, 
Credence Clearwater Revival's Fortunate Son. Other than political matters, the rising use of mind-altering drugs also had a major influence on music as LSD and marijuana became popular drugs with young people. Groups such as the Grateful Dead and Jefferson Airplane, and even the Beatles, began to create a brand of rock, acid rock, that was created in an attempt to enhance the effects of psychedelic drugs such as LSD. Indeed, the evolution of rock from songs about dating, dancing, and cars to songs about politics, protest, and drugs can be seen in the release of the Beatles' Rubber Soul album in 1965, which signaled the transition of the Beatles away from their earlier, simpler music to the more sophisticated music of their later years. The 1960s rock music and the hippie movement it helped create hit its creative and political apex in 1969 with the Woodstock Festival, a three-day festival held in Bethel, New York. This festival embodied what rock during the 1960s was all about, peace, love, happiness, protest, and LSD. There were 32 acts at the show, including Jimi Hendrix, Santana, and The Who. In the 1970s, rock and roll split off into many subgenres. There was hard rock, precursor to heavy metal, which included groups like Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith, and Sevenwolf. Soft rock, or folk rock, which included artists such as James Taylor, and punk rock, which included groups like the Ramones, The Clash, and The Sex Pistols. Punk rock is classified by its fast, hard-edged music that often has political or anti-establishment lyrics. From punk rock, an entire punk subculture emerged, which expressed youthful rebellion through a distinctive clothing style and anti-authoritarian ideology. In the 1980s, hard rock maintained its prominence and also branched off into another subgenre known as heavy metal, which included bands such as Metallica, Iron Maiden, and Motorhead. Metal has attracted fans from all over the world that are known as metalheads or headbangers. New wave groups like U2 also gained popularity during this era. U2 has used their fame to campaign for human rights and philanthropic causes. An example of this is Product Red. A brand created by U2 frontman Bono to raise money to help fight AIDS. The 90s were brimming with numerous yet distinctive new styles and bands. Grunge was one of them. It arose in the early 90s with the rise of bands like Nirvana and Pearl Jam, and became a defining musical style for a large portion of America's youth. Nirvana's Kurt Cobain, typified by his dirty and rugged look worn by so many grunge performers, would become one of the most influential guitarists of the period. Along with grunge, alternative rock became wildly popular. Artists like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Smashing Pumpkins, and Green Day drew from grunge but added their own flavor to the equation. Each of these genres were accompanied by their own culture, along with that of grunge. They are typically not the cleanest or most well-dressed, but instead, like the music they listen to, fans radiated an attitude of, we just don't care. Rock and roll continues to be one of the most influential and expressive genres of music, with artists continually using rock as an outlet for their beliefs and thoughts. Rage Against the Machine is a prime example of a group using their talent and fame to speak out against many current events. Even without many of the pioneering musicians of rock and roll's earlier years, bands like The Crooked Vultures, The Strokes, and Radiohead continue to innovate music and create newer, modern tracks. <laughs>